Hello everyone and welcome to Robot Fight Club. In today's video I'm going to be doing a recap of the newest robot I've just added to my collection. This is Joyous Rat and it is a, um, I guess, descendant slash cousin of Jolly Rat, which was one of my original wedge bots, which recently got destroyed at a competition. So I've rebuilt it and made it hopefully a lot better. Um, Four-wheel drive wedge bot should be pretty simple and effective in combat. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at it close up. Okay everyone, so here's the robot, and pretty basic uh, construction, and so I, this thing is actually quite big, here's a banana for scale, fairly decent sized robot, um, I don't think I mentioned it yet, but this is of course uh, US ant weight, so one pound, and um, it has this articulating plow in the front, so I just made this out of Lexan. Um, put a few bends on the sides here to deflect horizontals up onto the plow and this lip back here to prevent the horizontals from hitting into the frame. And I actually have um, some, some wedgelets that I'm going to be um, putting on. Um, I just have to make some mounts to mount them onto these hinges, but I'll be putting these wedgelets on to use for um fights where i'm not fighting a destructive robot and it's more important to get under them than it is to have a big shield in the front uh and i'll probably use them against verticals as well where it's really important that i get under them um, but i haven't done that yet so right now i just have this plow um the lexan is a little bit uh not quite as strong as i would like i would like to have some metal for this plow that being said, I do think it'll be strong enough, and I probably won't have like a catastrophic failure. It'll just get pretty beat up, so I think this should work just fine, and I don't really have the weight for a metal plow, so this is what I pretty much have to use. Um, like I showed, it's attached very securely for two hinges, four uh, screws going into the frame, and four bolts holding the plow on and um, other external features we have the wheels which um, are just these big foam wheels uh, made of layers of foam glued together with Gorilla Glue and they have a 3D printed hub which looks just like that and that's just press fit on which I hope will be strong enough but I'm not quite sure we'll have to see how it goes um, as long as the tires don't come off during a fight, then, um, I'll consider it a success and it'll be a lot easier to change than if they're attached some way, but they're on there pretty securely. So I think it should be fine, but that remains to be seen. Um, so these wheels are three layers of foam with the hub going through. And then there's one layer here where there is just foam. So. I'm hoping these will be able to take hits and kind of ablate rather than breaking. So that's the goal for that. Um, back, it's pretty much just a box. Uh, this is just a little, if you've seen any of uh, combat Combat's Cup, it's from Original Sin. They had something similar going but on. Pretty si basic base plate, just held on with six bolts there. Shouldn't be going anywhere about three millimeters thick, hopefully should be tough enough. Um, top plate, uh, I have these little bulges in here because the motors in these gearboxes, which I'll show you in a little bit, actually stick up above the side frame pieces. Got the joyous rat um, emblazoned very nicely on the front of this 3D printed part here. Um, 
But other than that, not too much going on. So I'm going to go ahead and take this top cover off, which is just held in by four uh, bolts here. So I'll take that off and show you guys the internals. Okay, so I have those off. And here is the inside of the top. Um, as you can see, these little bulges here. And that corresponds with these gearbox motors that kind of protrude up, like you can see right there above the frame. Um, and these motors are held in, in part, by these bolts that come down. And these sit and poke down and hold this gear motor against the side of the frame. So these gearboxes aren't actually like bolted in or anything. They're just held in by the base plates against the frame. Um, not base plates, but base plate and top plate. Um, as far as internals go, um, hold on really quick. Let me grab one. Okay, so for internals, these gearboxes are out of a Thunder Tumbler RC car. These are available at Walmart for about 10 bucks. And I found they're pretty dang good for making really cheap combat robots that are actually fairly competitive. It's a decent drive platform, a little bit bulky, obviously. It's not ideal, but with this robot and robots I've made using these uh, drive, like Jolly Rat 3, um, I'm more concerned about price, and this really keeps the price down and allows for an actually really fast and, well, not really super durable, fairly robust drive system if you do it right. So. These have been pretty awesome, and these are just out of that RC car for 10 bucks. And that also uses the very same uh, receiver out of that RC car. Pretty basic, not too much going on, just a receiver with integrated speed control, and not really speed control, motor control, I should, I should say, because um, with these, it's all or nothing. They're fully on or fully off. So driving's a little bit different than it would normally be. There's no proportional control. Um, here is the controller. Pretty basic. Um, but very cheap and works pretty well. Pretty much does everything I need it to do. And for a battery on the old, on the old Jolly Rat, I had double A, a double A pack. And that's obviously not that great. So I, for this one, I had these laying around. They are some 4.8 volt NICAD battery packs. And I actually have like four of these. I have another one somewhere, but I have four of these from an old, some two old RC cars I got from the garage sale. And they charge right up and work just fine. Very robust battery system. A little bit heavy, but, um, I'm not super concerned about that because there's really not much electronics here to speak of, so I can afford a little bit heavier battery. Um, this really works great and gives it plenty of power and really couldn't be happier about the battery situation. Other than that, as you can see, not much going on except these side frame pieces. So this or the side frame pieces are made out of Lexan and I actually had to do a little bit, they're a little bit more complicated of a part because of kind of how weird this motor is or gearbox is. So I had to kind of incorporate uh, that into the side design. So um, it slides in here just like that, slides right on there. Um, these holes are for these little extrusions where like shafts go for the gears inside the gearbox so those needed to be there but that just goes like there we got some countersinks here um and then this piece is this it's a pretty basic block it's just hdpe half inch thick and um holes there can can barely see it but well screws go through there two uh three quarter inch machine screws 
number six, I believe. Go through there, hold it in, and it's a box. Motors drop in, base plate comes up, and hold the motors against this piece. So these aren't, as I've said before, these aren't bolted in at all. So holds that in. Pretty easy system and should hopefully be durable and really easy to change all this stuff. Um, these will be really fast to change if I need to re replace a destroyed gearbox and um, frame pieces should be pretty much indestructible. Um, but if not, I got extras, so that's no problem. All pieces are um, can be used on either side, so I didn't need to make two different separate parts, which is nice. And other than that, that's pretty much all that's going on with this robot. Very simple. I made it for uh, about 10 bucks, uh, just of stuff I had lying around. So very, very simple robot and I'm hoping that I can be semi-competitive with it win a few fights the old Jolly Rat was pretty good in competition so I'm hoping this will be a little bit of a step up in terms of durability and competitiveness but without further ado let's go ahead and give it a quick test okay guys so I have my uh, robot fighting arena that I will be using for my upcoming robot fight club event on March 12th so it's all set up and I figured I might as well just test the robot inside the arena. So let's let's go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video on how I built a combat robot for 10 bucks. I'm hoping that it will be decently competitive. I'm not expecting me or close for $10, but I'm hoping to get some good fights out of it and I hope that it will be durable. The only way to find out is to fight it and that will be coming up at Robot Fight Club on March 12th, which is the event I'm putting on in my hometown of Oskaloosa, Iowa. So if you're interested in that event, I put a link in the description to the Robot Combat event listing. Um, so please feel free to check that out. And that's about all I have for you guys today. So I'll see you guys next time on Robot Fight Club. Thanks for watching.